uh, my man Chris and the other gentleman was your was it your friend or your brother? Who was the other guy? It's, it's like my brother. We actually grew up together through high school. And, and now, now, how old are you guys, man? How old are you and how old is your homie? I'm 18 and he's 17. Okay. Okay, so you guys were in um, Cincinnati. You were in KFC when all of this happened, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so now what what happened? Y'all were sitting there. Basically, you were, from what I understand, you were charging your phones, right? Yeah, he was actually charging his phone so that he could call his uncle to get him the money for the game. Okay, and how much was the game? The game was only $3. His oh. uncle was supposed to give him 10 Okay. Okay, because they made a big deal about the, the y'all were trying to get three dollars, trying to scrape up three dollars for a high school basketball game and all that stuff. But go ahead. Now, what else happened? So y'all would he was on the phone or he was trying to get money from his uncle. And what happened? Well, yeah, we was just sitting there for a while. And actually, beforehand, before we had actually sat down in KFC, when we walked in, we actually saw them as a group standing there. But we didn't actually know who she was. We really didn't pay attention to it. Okay, not too many people know who she is. They know who the character Sandra Bullock played, but they a lot of folks just simply don't know who she is. But go ahead. Okay, so we were sitting down for a while, and she comes over, and she sits there and looks at us and was like, what's up, guys? And we both just looking like, should we respond to her? Because I'm, as, out of all the stuff that's been going on between the racial profile with all the black kids and white people, we didn't know how should we how should we respond to her, so we just kept quiet. So to break the silence, she was just like, you know, this is my story, feel it. So we thinking she the manager, we thinking she gonna kick us out if we don't tell her what's going on. So we explained to her what was going on, but we never actually show her our phones. Like we never show her that we was texting people. We just happened to have our phones in our hands, and she asked us what we was doing. We was like. We're waiting on his uncle to call him back so that he could get the money for the game. And so we actually had a conversation for about five minutes. She was asking us how school was going, you know, were we athletes, how was our grades, et cetera. So as the conversation continued on, she asked us, have we ever heard of the movie Blindside? And at that moment, my brother, the person I was with, was like, oh, my God, you're the actual mother. Like, not the actor, the actual mother, though. So he actually recognized it before I did. Okay. And as I and as I kept looking at, it, I was like, "Yo, this this really is her." So once he once we clarified that and actually recognized who she was, her friends, which were, who were standing over by the counter and register, started laughing and looking over. And we was looking. Like, I thought I was actually on a TV show. I thought I was getting punked or something because I still didn't believe it for at least fifteen minutes. I still didn't believe this was happening. Okay. So we got up and walked over to her friends, and we all started having a conversation. And the guy she was with actually looked like the father from the movie. I don't know who the man was, but he actually looked like the father from the movie, but it turns out he wasn't. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, how many people were with her? I was. It was probably about three or four, because I remember it was a lady and two guys. I can't remember it's actually a fourth person, but I know it was three for sure. Okay. Okay. So you guys started talking to the friends, right? Yeah. And what were they saying? They were all just like, yeah, this is the lady from Blindside, you know, going along with the whole situation. Like, we were never actually aware of that her friend had made the comment, which made Leanne come over to us and speak to us. Right. We were never aware of that. Okay, okay. They were all grinning in your face like everything was cool. Yeah. Okay. So now what else happened while you were talking to Leanne for about five minutes, and then what else happened? Well, we were talking, and she came up with a – came up with an agreement, well, if I treat you guys to the game, will you do a good deed tomorrow? And we sat there and thought about it at first because we thought she was bluffing about the whole situation. Okay. So we kind of sat there and thought it over for a little bit. And we was like, yeah, you know, we ain't got nothing to lose. We might as well. So we agreed to it. And she actually didn't give us $3. She actually gave us $20 a piece, which oh. is what really surprised me. Okay. So she gave so us $20 she gave each. Us, okay. She asked us where was the game at, and I told her it was a measly three men walk up the street. And she was like, oh, you guys want to ride with us? But we was just like, nah, we, we just going to wait here for a minute. So after she gave us, handed us the money, she was just like, hey, you know what? This would be a great time for a picture. And we was in the midst of still 
believing that we actually just met the actual mother of Michael Orr. So we just kind of went along with this situation. Like, you know what? Might as well. So I had it on my phone, too. Like, you know, I want to show my friends that this was a great experience that I actually got to meet the actual mom of Michael Orr. So we both took pictures on both of our phones. And that's basically how the situation ended. Okay. We all said goodbye and stuff too, like that. Okay. Okay. Because cause some people were mentioning, even on your Instagram, how you were like saying how it was a lucky day. So you were kind of excited about it, right? Yeah, I was actually excited to meet her. Okay. Okay. But I, I love the movie. Right. And a lot of people are making it seem like this is this big white savior thing because I'm I'm not comfortable with how things went down personally. I don't like the fact that they came up to you, she came up to you basically interrogating you dudes. You know, I I don't think that was cool. And then trying to play it off like are you guys going to do a good deed, here's some money because that's not the premise where she came up to you as. You you understand that? Yeah, I understand where a lot of people are coming from with that situation. Yeah. I never actually have looked at looked at it from that point of view, but now that I'm seeing a lot more people are saying the same thing, it's kind of coming to me. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, they she shouldn't have never came up to you guys in the first place because, again, when you found out that the friend was like, those two guys are up to no good, how'd you feel about that? Well, to be honest, I was, I was pretty mad because I'm like, Oh, because we're some black males sitting in a booth by ourselves, minding our business, we gotta be up to no good. Which is usually the stereotype of black males when they're hanging around together. Absolutely. So I was pretty mad about that. Absolutely. And and, and and on her Instagram, not her Instagram, but her Facebook, she was talking about how you guys got money for bus fare, but like you said, the, the game was only like a three minute walk, right? Yeah, because where were we at? The KFC we was at was actually up the street from my house. We are actually, before we got to KFC, we was actually coming from where the game was at. We just needed to meet somewhere to meet his uncle to get the money. Okay. So we actually had walked from the game previous to coming to KFC. Okay. Because I, I don't like that whole narrative of them making you guys seem like some poor little impoverished black kids. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's who knows me is talking about because... I actually didn't know she posted it on any of her social media sites. My teacher is the one who actually brought it to my attention because she saw it in her news feed and she was kind of ticked off at all the comments and how she worded the situation. Yeah. And when I showed my mama, she became outraged at it too because she was like, my son isn't at all poor or some type of charity case. I, I feel your mom. And I was wondering, I'm like, how does, I wonder how these young men's parents feel that this woman came up basically interrogating them like this and then tried to play it off. And now it turned into some kind of feel good white savior story. Because again, I know when, when she sat down to, with you guys, I know the first thing in your mind was like, okay, what's going on? What, what did you think? Were you guys a little nervous when she first sat down? Yeah, we, we were actually nervous because it was like, you know, some random, not trying to be racist, but some random white lady just came over, brought a chair next to our table and sat there and looked at us as if we were up to some trouble or something. So we was, we was actually kind of nervous, which is why we didn't respond in the first I can, place. I can imagine. I can imagine that. Because, yeah, you know, her, her family, she's like, you know, part of law enforcement. Her fam, her dad was a U.S. Marshal. So um, her whole tough gal Southern act, that comes from her having backup of law enforcement. And she knows that her word against any young black male is going to be believed over, over them. So I can imagine the fear that went through you because I would have assumed that she has already called the police if she just sat down next to me and didn't say anything and then start, started to demand you guys to spill it. You know, what, what did you guys think when she was saying spill it? What, what were you thinking? Well, I thought, I thought she may have thought we was causing some type of trouble or incident at the store, but we wasn't, I, was, I wasn't actually sure of why she said spill it. Because we hadn't done anything wrong. And during the process, I was thinking in my head, like, OMG, I hope I didn't do nothing before this that may have caused her to think we are causing some type of trouble. Or, right. You know. And, and that's unfortunate, man, that we have to be on alert and we have to be in a position where we are interrogated by 
suspected white supremacists. And, and that's a very unfortunate thing for, for black people around the country. That goes back into that whole Jim Crow era where black people have to explain their presence to people. And we have a lot of racial incidents that's popping up in this country and it's not being addressed. And black people around the country are being terrorized psychologically and physically so you were you were definitely in the right to be concerned about this woman's intentions even though this was her establishment you didn't know that and again you don't know what a person is going to accuse you of but i just want other black people especially back black youths to know when you're out and about like this and people pull a stunt like this you are in danger this is not like some kind of feel-good story if you guys had not have given this woman the the answer she wanted to hear you know, telling what could have happened. She could have easily called the police and said, hey, these are these two young black men are trespassing or they look like they're about to rob the place. And the cops could have ran up and start blasting on you dudes. You understand that? Yeah, I understand you completely, sir. Yeah, yeah. So the, the severity of that is a little more serious than these suspected white supremacists are trying to make it out to be. And I'm glad you guys are all right, man. I w- you know what I want? I want to get the address to that KFC. I will personally... Send her back her funky little $40 because you're not no charity case. My organization will give you guys a, a couple of dollars, which you don't need it, but just for your inconvenience. Now, you work, right? You're not no poor, disenfranchised kid. You you do have a job, right? Yeah, I've actually had a job for over a year now. I've been working at McDonald's, and I've recently actually got promoted to being a crew trainer for my hard work and leadership. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So that whole thing where they have to treat us like we're some type of refugees and oh, that that's corny I, I i don't like that that narrative that they like to create about us that they have to come save us because we're just so pathetic and we're just wallowing in poverty and that whole nonsense but i'm glad you guys are straight i'm glad everything is cool man what else you got to say what, what else you got to say about the whole situation to before we leave well i kind of I kind of look back on the situation, like, you know, sometimes I, I regret taking a picture because now, like, my face is all over the internet, and it's not, and it's not in any way, shape, or form, like, it's not positive to me. It's not a positive vibe that I'm getting from, for the reason my face is all over the internet. Because it's like, anytime you type in her name on Google, that picture is the first picture that pops up. Yeah. And yeah. so now, you know, when I go around school, everybody's like, why is that lady trying to make you guys seem broken? You know, people are making jokes about it, you know, calling me broke and stuff. I know they're playing, but I mean, sometimes I take, it, I take it as a serious offense because I'm not a broke kid at all. I actually have money. I keep money on me. Right. But you just that, so I, that, I, just that day, you might not have had something on you. You, you know, that day you might have been tapped out a little bit or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I get that. Because I, I've, I've, yeah, seen, when, I've seen some some suspected I've seen some suspected white supremacists sit up and talk about why did they need three dollars? They got on these expensive headphones and they got on jewelry and all this. So a lot of people are making these little slick remarks about the picture too. You, you understand? Yeah, and I actually I actually addressed that on a Facebook post where people were talking about the stuff I had on. Because to be honest, everything I had on did not cost over two hundred dollars all put together. Okay. The headphones I had on were actually beats. Okay. They were actually from a Bluetooth company called Blue It which were only thirty five dollars on Amazon, which is the reason I bought them because they're good quality for the price they were. Okay. Absolutely. My chain, my gold chain, it it wasn't real. I mean, I'm not going to lie about it. It wasn't real. It was only twenty dollars. Okay. Well, I mean, fourteen dollars. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll admit, I'll admit, my Nike hoodie was forty five dollars, but my pants were only ten. Okay. So I'm I'm just looking at these comments like people really are just throwing their opinions out there without knowing the littlest clue about what's going on. Like how can you just assume those are these headphones? Like just because they're white and they're on my on a black kid's head, that's how I was feeling because I guess since Dr. Dre apparently made the headphones that they assume that they're beats like. Right, right. I feel you, brother, man. And again, I just hate that they try to, you know, use this opportunity to use you to um, teens as this feel good. Let's rise above racism when they did something extremely racist. As far as I'm concerned, walking up to random 
um, young, innocent black people demanding why they're there, demanding answers from them. That's going back to Jim Crow and slavery. And I don't like it. And that's not a good precedent to set. And it's not a feel good moment. It's not a positive moment. That's putting black people in an inferior position. And that's something that we cannot tolerate in this day and age. So I I feel you, brother. and, and, And again, I'm glad that you're waking up to a lot of the rhetoric and the propaganda people are trying to make this as because this is not a positive thing as far as I'm concerned. Um, the press, the pretense of what she did and how she did it was wrong. And then after they saw that you guys were innocent and you guys weren't doing anything, then they tried to flip it as if they're trying to help the poor little black disenfranchised kids. So I, and, and now they're parading your picture around like you're, uh, this is an episode of different strokes or something. And, and I'm uncomfortable with that. And again, <laughs> I want to get their address and I will personally send her back. Miss Lee Ann Tui, her little funky $40, and y'all keep it pushing. Anyway, man, what else you got going on in your life, man? You going to college? What you going to do with yourself, um, Chris? Well, actually, I'm a three-sport athlete, and I'm looking to go to college to play football. Cool. I actually, I'm in, I'm in the middle of my basketball season right now, and I'm, I'm actually a good student, a great student athlete. I have good grades. I've been in honor classes all my life, you know, I've done a lot of good things. I've, I've done a lot of good things in high school as far as academically and athletically. So I feel like people are judging me based on what some white lady said on her post. But I'm not, I'm not a bad kid. I'm actually a good kid. Absolutely.